The internet became flooded with people involved in MK Ultra from all directions. They are taking over entirely the news. Uh, but this video is about... No, I wouldn't say about a man that was the most influential from the German side as for um, ruining my life. Nah, this is just Germany. What you're going to learn about right now, this is just Germany, this is just Deutschland. This is how the Deutschland always operated this is this is basically deutschland deutschland is gnus this is what you possibly could not believe world you possibly could not believe world that are teaching you to stay away from world that are lessening in you about what is moral and what is immoral, what is ethical and unethical. Let me demonstrate to you what 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 Germany is. Ah, this guy was involved in MK Ultra with his wife. Uh, apparently, he became a porn star. Uh, this is a university, Wisconsin system board of regions and so on okay cool um like i said people involved in mk ultra are just taking over but this video is about maybe two guys this is the third guy um i'm gonna speak about today jacques delors delors paris frenchman who stated to me that if it will be really bad, if things are going to turn really, really, really ugly, uh, they called him an architect of the modern Europe. He told me in that case, he said, uh, he never blamed me for anything. He, he blamed other politicians. He attacked other politicians. Uh, he was extremely angry with the politicians whom in front of me he was saying that um, they, they, they caused damage to me based on his um, architecture that uh, he developed for the Europe. Uh, they, they, they were destroying his architecture of modern Europe. He literally would go, this was a politician that would go and go in the face to the politicians, uh, state them in front of me whenever the French politicians would deliver me to him, that he literally pointed out, it's, look what you have done to him, this is not that should happen to him, etc., etc., etc. He was not happy about the whole thing but he told me that this if things are gonna turn really really ugly he would not want to be on the picture anywhere and will file that certificate whether he is dead for real whether he passed away or not here is where I'm gonna end I'm not gonna go anywhere with it further uh, so this is a French guy, president of the European Commission, Jacques Delors, um, filed for the death certificate in my eyes. And I'm moving to the next issue, which is of uh, much greater importance to me. This here is just an individual from Austria. His name is Gaston Glock. Uh, if you heard about the Glock pistols, they're quite famous. This is the man who built entire company on my case. They did not 
manufacture uh, pistols till uh, this case uh, came into reality. Uh, they did manufacture stuff for the Austrian military. And because I liked him so much, because I embraced him so much, because I gave him a, such a support, the Austrian government decided they will pursue the manufacturing of Glock guns through, uh, through him. This was just a pleasant, good-looking uh, gentleman that uh, I embraced as a child and this is basically how the uh, Austrian government gave one whatever he needed to become uh, a manufacturer of weapons. This is exactly how it works. That's exactly how it works. When uh, Elon Musk decided will begin to manufacture engines for his Tesla cars. He too traveled to Taiwan, found uh, one manufacturer in particular to be of his interest. Uh, they were doing some other stuff, generators, whatever they were doing. And uh, once he found a potential in one, in a market that was price range, in a price range of what he wanted and politically convenient uh, atmosphere, it's basically whatever U.S. government required from him, he decided to pursue uh, the contract with somebody who had no relationship with the engines. Uh, and so the companies would grow like this, this, was, this is just a frequent, the way it's done, basically, around the world. That's exactly the way it goes. Just so that if you wonder, well, how, well, uh, and this and that. There is no waha here. Um, this guy, uh, I, sucks, I, of course, suspect him of that certificate. These are old people. They are really old people. Uh, these are not young people. Uh, for instance, this man here, I think it was 99 years old. Well, let me see that. Whatever, I think 99 years old. Uh, and Gaston, I think it was... <clears throat> I, I don't even know. You know, they, these, are not young, these are not young people. Uh, but this man... Jacques Delors particular told me will file for death certificate, fake death certificate, and list himself as basically as dead. He was 98, not 90, 98, and he listed himself as gone. Uh, so this this people all involved since my early 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 childhood in MKUltra with this man who built entirely the company Glock through the German uh, through the Austrian uh, government he might have actually um, even started. The one gun, it could be that he that he got, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They told me that uh, there was something that he started with a manufacturing uh, before I came on his picture. Uh, this was a Loise Peterle who claimed me, Slovenian Udba individual Loise Peterle. Uh, but uh, this guy, Loise Peterle, was, he was in, in it for nothing other than cause damage, lies. It was said during MK Ultra, well stated, that this man built his company, Glock, based on cause 
compliments I was giving him that Austrian government government benefited him. You know, the thing is, it doesn't really matter to me. He did not cause me damage like Arnold Schwarzenegger did. I just want to see where is this uh, location here. This is located close to Vienna. Look, uh, nothing what Arnold Schwarzenegger did to me uh, have this guy done. Uh, this guy was polite uh, for the most part. Once he became wealthy and so on, he also became dirty. Uh, but that was 94 years old. That was just a fraction of what probably even Austrian government required him to do. This was one of the nicest people, Glock, Gaston Glock. Uh, and well, you know, he's gone of the picture. He doesn't want to be on a picture. <clears throat> That's, uh, I'm going to say, his decision. He's right. Uh, but today we will be talking about the Volkan, Wolfgang Schoble. We're going to be talking about Angela Merkel. This is an individual who claimed that I talked uh, Kaufmann. Uh, that I, I that I was the one who convinced Kaufmann Dietrich Kaufmann into shooting him in 1990. Um, uh, Dieter Kaufmann. Dieter Kaufmann. Uh, they acknowledge him as a schizophrenic and uh, this is what this man told me who became pinned on the wheelchair because of Dieter Kaufmann uh, he will do to me that I was the one drugged up who convinced Dieter Kaufmann to go out there and shoot him. Get this man shot. This is a politician from the CDU. And uh, you know, I am not going to say that uh, that uh, Dietrich Kaufmann did not did not shoot. Uh, I will not say that Dietrich Kaufmann did not shoot uh, the CDU uh, head. I will not say this. I will not say that Wolfgang Schauble was not shot with a gun. I am not saying that Wolfgang Schauble was not shot with a gun. Uh, however, um, uh, Wolfgang, Wolfgang Schauble should not take so much to his heart about crime he did against me together with the Angela Merkel. This is the political party of the Angela Merkel. He shouldn't be so sensitive about all this stuff, you know. You know, it's it's just um, this here, this individual was the one who caused more damage than anybody in this world. And he also was a knowledge of somebody who caused uh, harm, damage, uh, unlike anybody uh, inside of the European Union, inside of the Europe and European continent, they acknowledge with Arnold Schwarzenegger's approach toward Moscow uh, long before uh, Soviet Union have even long before I managed to completely decimate Soviet Union uh, as a number one collaborator of the Russia. The number one collaborator of the Russia was always Germany. Germany was the one that was causing problem within Europe and Germany was the one who pushed Ukraine 
into ultimate struggle for existence. Nobody caused damage, nobody caused harm as much as this German murderer did. This assassin caused more damage than anybody else involved in MK Ultra. That's why I believe that he does have a special place on this block. As far as uh, <clears throat> as far as this individual, uh, <clears throat> German government was extremely violent with me. They acted with extreme acts. They implemented extreme acts of violence against me during MK Ultra, in particular, year 1989 when they knew the Soviet Union is going to fall apart. Uh, it was just a matter of time. Soviet Union should already have been disbanded in 1989. They just took uh, extra two years to do it the way it would fit them. Uh, basically to excuse somehow the fall of the Russian Empire uh, Russians reserved a most diplomatic way possible to, you know, rationalize the failure which started in 1972. It was nothing other than based on a pure violence ideology that I stood up against with everything I had as a child, as a baby. Uh, in particular, in 1989, Germans became violent in Eastern and in Western Germany. Maybe in Western Germany, Germans became more violent than in Eastern Germany. It's kind of strange because Western Germany was under control of the United States, France, Britain. Uh, but they sense that it's over. And did so, in, encouraged in violence. Uh, Assuming that it was no risk to uh, what's about to take next. In fact, it would be beneficial uh, to develop as strong as possible relationship, relations with uh, mecca of uh, oil, petroleum, uh, gas, uh, minerals. That was Russia, basically. Russian Federation, now known as the Russian Federation. And so what happened exactly to this guy here? Uh, all I remember is that I don't remember much about. Um, this guy was a thug, a pro-Russian thug that advocated uh, Russian... What we see today have happened in Ukraine, uh, Russian aggression on Europe, if you like. Uh, and uh, whether this guy with this Dietrich Kaufmann actually shoot him because of um, because of his political views at the time, uh, I do not know. Uh, um, I remember uh, Kaufman, a shooter, therefore, as uh, somebody uh, very intelligent, very sharp-minded, basically is how I assessed Dietrich Kaufman, who was involved in this case probably since 1989. Uh, the man looked to me, based on my observation, as uh, maybe I would say even Central Intelligence Agency uh, individual. He looked to me as, uh, as completely sharp-minded. Angela Merkel claimed me that I would not even recognize him. I do recognize him. He was always... Dietrich Kaufmann was always dressed well. He's the man that you see right there with a the tie. Um, in 1989, this man more looked like a central intelligence agent. Did not look like some kind of just uh, 
you know, he was um, he was well built, he was well dressed, and I had no fucking idea what he was up to. I had no idea what he was up to, and I don't have any proof that uh, this guy uh, in fact is not, well, this individual was one of the very few that uh, religiously sticked with me. Um, it was something, I don't know what went on, but the German police uh, intervened. Uh, it, was a, it was quite a group of people and uh, intervened, and that group of the people disappeared from the picture, basically. Um, and... Um, well, the next thing you see, uh, Wolfgang Schauble did not even appear in the picture anymore. And the next thing you see is I was guilty for one being shot. At. This is how the MKO true is. Um, Look, man, um, I don't even have the, the proof that you were ever shot at. Did the, uh, Wolfgang Schauble is definitely not dead. Wolfgang Schauble is definitely on a fake death certificate. Um, he disappeared from disgrace. Disgrace have eaten away Wolfgang Schauble. Wolfgang Schauble lasted for some time, uh, but once it became evident that this case is gonna is gonna come through, it was over with. It was the end of it. This was it for Wolfgang Schauble. He didn't have any kind of reason anymore to remain in the picture. This news here about Arnold Schwarzenegger was too damn bad of a cleaner about the German politics. It's a, it's a news that points out just how much Germany was in bed with the Russia. What still was a Soviet Union. It was it was it was for somebody like Wolfgang Wolfgang Schauble news that it was just a matter of time when he would go and run through his Deutsche Regierung in Berlin to file for fake death certificate. Wolfgang Schauble is and was in a hurry to disappear. Paniker, panic, she's a shit German, disappeared from the political stage in a panic hastily yesterday. The Grand Master of Angela Merkel. All the fuck I know is that the CDU used this very case to rationalize existence of the German politic and did so in the name of this individual here in the name of this horror here that you see, in the name of this German disgrace here that you see here, in the name of the shooting that took place in 1990, for which German diplomacy blamed me for it, as if I would go out there and talk somebody into the shooting, which is fucking insane. And if I did somehow talk somebody in the shooting during MK Ultra, and if I did so, then you know so that Dietrich Wolfgang Schaube, actually Wolfgang Schaube, Dietrich Kaufmann, the shooter, therefore, was indeed acted in the name of the German state. 
uh, Germany admitted through a shooting, uh, not through the shooting, but through pointing finger at me as the one who caused the shooting of Wolfgang Schaube into complete atrocity. Germany admits guilt into atrocity against me. Yeah? Germans, when they announced that I was the one who convinced uh, a shooter, Wolfgang Sch uh, uh, Dietrich Kaufmann, into shooting, how the fuck am I going to go? How the fuck I do this when I couldn't escape from the picture? When I was dropped up, how the fuck I do this? How do I go and convince us how old I was? Maybe 18 years old? 17 years old, dropped up kid from Slovenia who never traveled anywhere else than to Croatian uh, Adriatic coast. One time I actually traveled with a mother to Belgrade, to the Serbia all the way at the Josip Broz Tito's funeral. And this is what the fuck was it. Actually, actually I did go with my aunt all the way to the border with the Austria and Slovenia because she lived right on the other side of the border uh, in the city called Filach in Austria. That is also true. I did not know anything about it. I didn't travel anywhere. I was inside of the home. I didn't travel absolutely anywhere. How the fuck am I going to go and convince somebody in Berlin? You know how far that is? From where I am, it's like on the other side of the Europe. It's like I'm not too far from Adriatic coast, and Berlin is quite close to the Baltic coast. You know how far the fuck that is? I didn't take a ride as a 17 year old, I didn't have a driver license, I didn't have a way to travel. To Germany, other than whenever German government hijacked me and had me delivered there to meet all these politicians. Actually, I did have a driver license, I think, in 1990 already. I uh, actually in uh, 1990, I was actually what was, my age was like 18 years old, 19 years old. Eighteen years old, something like this. Nineteen. I was born in December, nineteen seventy-two, which is practically uh, almost nineteen seventy-two. And German government went on to blame me to. All other politicians that they involved in MK Ultra, this was the worst parasite, this Kelmut Kohl, the same garbage. He disappeared already before. They just, uh, characteristic for the CDU always was the Angela Merkel uh, would make people disappear in a way, like for instance, the case of the Kelmut Kohl was that the German government would perform severe torture on me till they would actually get the statement from me that I want one removed at whatever cost from MK Ultra. Then what they would do is <laughs> they would make person disappear and they would retain the original recordings about my bagging them to, re to remove this beast from MK Ultra, whichever way they know. And this is basically how the things went with the Germans, with the CDU. A CDU, this is what uh, Angela Merkel would testify for me, that her way always was a bestial torture before they would remove the politician. And my asking them to have one removed. Yeah? Now, I don't think there was any difference with... Wolfgang Schauble, 
All through Wolfgang Schauble remained in the picture, so maybe, probably, I would say the shooting, something with the shooting probably was even real. How much that had to do with me? How much the fuck would that have to do with me? Uh, if that would have anything to do with me, then this guy, this Kaufman, would not be labeled as a schizophrenic. How the fuck do you go and you label somebody as a paranoid schizophrenic? Uh, if he acted in a political sense, how the fuck do you go and you label him as a, as a schizophrenic? He had his beliefs. He had his views. Uh, there must have been something he didn't like that he decided he would do something like this, unless it was something else that went on. What the fuck went on? Why did he pull the gun out? Um, <laughs> and um, what exactly made uh, German government remove one from the picture the way they did? Uh, finally, in 2000, and I, I don't know what it was. It says here that uh, somewhere I read that in 2005, something like this, they uh, they let him free or whatever. So like after five years or something like this, that uh, that he made peace with him and they let him free. Uh, something that uh, Schauble was uh, extremely, extremely angry about. I remember that uh, Wolfgang Schauble blamed me for this uh, and when they let Dietrich Kaufmann on a freedom, uh, it was a terrible day for the Wolfgang Schauble. It was a terrible, terrible day for the Wolfgang Schauble. So, um, I don't know. All I did was I gave you the account of actual uh, events that went on. It kind of uh, suggests me that shooting might have been real, uh, that actually it was a real shooting. Uh, it was not something that would be, uh, you know, just uh, something they would do to, uh, you know, uh, the guy like this could suffer from whatever consequences, he'd have an injury or whatever. And, you know, what you do is you put some fake bullets inside of the revolver, you fire them out in the public, whatever. And, you know, and the guy says, ha, 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 you know, throw his down on the floor. And the next thing you do, you have a mainstream media writing about this stuff and the guy in the wheelchair and so on. Since. You don't know anything about what the fuck goes on in a circumstances like this. With eyes covered, um, my being drugged up in no position to serve other than a pool in a Germany, in a tool, in an ultimate German tool in the hands of German government, same in Russia, in the hands of Russian government, and same in the US, in the hands of American government, there is no way for somebody like myself, based on stuff that I have spoken to you about, determine whether this guy really was shot at, uh, or saying that he was not shot at. I can't say that he was not shot at. Uh, I just find it insane that uh, the man that looked like a central intelligence agent, like a CIA guy, shot. And I would like to learn more about this Dietrich uh, Kaufman. Uh, I think he had like a three-year profession, like that he did not have a really high school, that he was like, but you know, that doesn't mean shit. You know, uh, who, who is this guy, uh, Dietrich Kaufmann, 
he was growing up where in fucking eastern Germany uh, with a Stasi, with a with a with a Soviet KGB, with a with a Russian KGB. They killed people. They persecuted people. This was not a you know a Wunderland like Angela Merkel would want. Uh, for many to pursue Eastern Germany, in a way, during the time he was, she was climbing in a pants of the uh, KGB and the uh, Soviets, uh, giving them all kinds of, uh, you know, pretend, acting like it's all fucking normal. You know, it's, it's like in a part of the normal world, but it actually was not part of the normal world. You know, uh, the thing is that uh, Germans. Especially became addicted seeing me when they would deliver me to the Berlin. Uh, on both sides of the border, I made a stronger relation probably with Eastern Germany than with the Western Germany because Eastern Germans bound themselves to me more. They, uh, they knew basically where I was coming from. And uh, we kind of shared common grounds, basically, common, common uh, social uh, environment, you know. They were occupied by the, by the Russians, and in Slovenia, we were occupied by the Serbs. And, uh, you know, Yugoslavia was part of this Eastern uh, Soviet, pro-Soviet uh, block anyways. So, they only mean one thing when you saw me. And that's why the Germans loved me so much. There was only one thing. And it's something that I mentioned here, the Schwarzenegger, when I talk about the Schwarzenegger. I already told you that in the case of the Schwarzenegger, seeing Schwarzenegger, uh, it only meant that you have seen men who grabbed more and more wealth to himself. That's all the hell it meant. It only meant that, that he grabbed himself more wealth to himself uh, and relations for the sake of Germany at expense of other European Union countries such as France, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, especially Poland, especially Czech Republic, Slovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, and so on, Hungary. This was a, this was a, this is a king of the swines. This is a king, swine of the swines that existed on earth. Such a treacherous person never existed. Such a fake, treacherous person, Mr. Steroid never existed in the fucking universe. Never existed anything like this in, a, in the universe. When you see me as a child, you only knew one thing. The only difference, as I said, between the Schwarzenegger was that you knew that he was piling more and more and more money, that he was becoming wealthier and wealthier and wealthier at expense of others. Nobody more exploited than myself. But when you saw myself, that Arnold Schwarzenegger did absolutely everything he possibly could to get destroyed. It meant only something else. When you saw me, it only meant one thing. You could see me and once you would not see me, it was certain you're never going to see me again. <clears throat> you understand? Schwarzenegger for sure is going to be there tomorrow. There was no doubt about Schwarzenegger because it was all about, all about this. But when you saw me, it only meant that you saw me, basically that you still saw me. And when you saw me, it only meant one thing. 
that the Russians are losing, that Soviets are getting kicked, beaten up all over the place. You understand? Not seeing me, that only would mean one thing. I am not going to say exactly what, but this was the difference between me, I, myself, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, uh, I pity Dietrich Kaufmann for his uh, <laughs> uh, stunts. This man who never played any kind of role in my in my world of affairs, MK Ultra world of affairs. So I was doing my stuff uh, with without Kaufman, with Angela Merkel, without Angela Merkel. But it was really Angela Merkel that insisted me. The existence of the CDU would be purely based on on this, you know, skeleton in the closet case, basically a uh, case of Wolfgang Schauble uh, and Dietrich Kaufmann. Uh, based on what I recall, based on what I also remember about this shooting, if it's going to make any difference or whatever, uh, there was some kind of personal dispute. Uh, the crowd that they dispersed, seems to me that this was an Eastern German crowd, uh, came completely to terms with uh, a German government. They already agreed upon whatever the case was. I don't know where the hell this happened. Was it, was it, what is this shooting took place? I don't know anything about this. Was it in Eastern Germany, Western Germany? I had no fucking idea. Doesn't even matter. I just go according to the memory, what, what I recall about this shooting. Uh, and uh, that crowd that uh, they reached consensus consensus with uh, in which also this Dietrich Kaufmann participated uh, it was completely okay also with the Dietrich Kaufmann everything was okay everything was normal but there was some kind of a personal dispute they had some kind of personal dispute I don't know what they had with Dietrich Kaufmann and then the shots rang which was far, far, far to have anything to do with me. Uh, maybe, who the hell knows, it did have something to do with me. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck that's supposed to mean, that you go and you hijack somebody and you drug the person up and you mistreat him and you treat him like a piece of shit. Somebody that's actually fighting... Uh, for your well-being, that is from abroad, that is from another country, and is fighting for your well-being, for your freedom, uh, and you watch your politicians basically mistreating him, cleaning basically, like, swipe the floor with him, uh, and, uh, you know, what kind of tensions did the German government have with this fraction of the people? I have no fucking clue. All I know is that whenever I was delivered to the Berlin, uh, people were thrilled to see me on both sides of the Berlin. Germans went crazy when they saw me because it only meant one thing. Whatever, whoever saw me on the picture during MKUltra only meant one thing. It meant that that other side is taking a really, really, really hard hit. Really, really hard hits. And I was not a politician. Donald Trump, something boasts about politicians, that he's not a politician. <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump always was all about, about nothing other than a politic. This is the fakest person in the world the world have ever witnessed to. Who the fuck was more politician in this world than Donald Trump? Donnie was always hiding in the back like a Schwarzenegger and was... Uh, you know, with a, you know, that's how he earned basically his wealth, his money, with the betrayal. 
There's few kinds of people, uh, but traits of Schwarzenegger and Donald Trump are about the worst traits people ever possessed in this world. Uh, Schwarzenegger, who loved to go and tell about how uh, his Austrian father suffered from depression uh, when he returned all broken uh, home after the World War II with his colleagues, how difficult it was, uh, how he fought with depression. I, I don't actually. This, this, the guy like this, it just uh, it makes me sick. So, uh, I am going to dedicate this video to Wolfgang Schauble. Mm, he didn't make any anything, uh, any kind of damage anywhere even near as to what Arnold Schwarzenegger cost me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess that... Uh, he played his evil part, you know, that uh, with the Helmut Kohl and, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, that, that he ensured, you know, what difference, let me ask you, what difference the fuck would it be if it would have been a CDU or it would be any other uh, company out there uh, that would run the world of the German politics? What, what, what exactly would be the difference? You know, Christian Democrat... This is, these are just the angels. They're just more close. They're closer to the Himmel, you know. They're, they're more close to God. They're more close to God, you know. But, you know, all in all, when it comes to German polity, whoever would run the world of affairs, it would make no fucking difference. Um, the people that you see right there, uh, could well be different, that will look different in some other political party in the Germany. Uh, this is basically the way it went. This is how, how it all functions. This is basically the way it functions. This is just other people in the background that are making decisions. And what you see right there are actually really clowns and politicians that take responsibility for it, like the hardest hit. Because this skeleton in the closet, you know, uh, the Germans uh, build upon, that Germans uh, saw themselves in, the Germans uh, used, you know, this wheelchair politic, you know, they, they will be using to remind me of, you know, what uh, this is just basically admission into what we have done to you. Uh, and it's basically our way, basically, to defend ourselves from what we have, the evil we have done to you. It's admission into crime. I see this is a recognition. You know, when I started this video, I told you about the words like a gnus or babno, a disgusting, repulsive, treacherous, liarous. I told you this is going to be the video about the Germany, and the truth about the Germany was nothing pretty in this case. It was nothing pretty in this case. Tom Jones, let's say, you know, Tom Jones eventually ended up in a marriage with a black lady, uh, became completely paranoid, lost his mind. Because of the torture, he got himself involved. Finally lost his mind so much that they figure out for him because he couldn't sleep no more. That's that other song of Tom Jones. I like somebody to sing him that fucking song. Make him a fucking song. Couldn't sleep no more. Got himself in a bed with a black lady to conceive a black child deliberately. So that he could rationalize the torture against me through a racial matter. Because the Germans became, they wanted to find a way, they wanted to find a recipe with the British 
with Americans for excusing this skeleton in the closet. And the way to do it was basically through the hatred, through the beating, through the racism, incitement and hatred. Race biting, basically. Through the physical torture. They employed full time team of Slovenian police officers in Slovenia that would poison and do this stuff to accomplish their human task. This was just one case. How many children like this were born to the people that lost their fucking mind, that no longer knew how to go about life, how to see themselves in the mirror, how to be seen by other people in a society. I had no fucking clue. There were many. They were raining from all directions possible. Losing their mind on a skeleton in the closet. Such was the politic of the CDU, Wolfgang Schauble. And Frau Angela Merkel, she will have to explain more about uh, Helmut Kohl, about Wolfgang Schauble about her skeleton in the closet. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to do for this video. Uh, I think I did pretty good, Angela Merkel, right? I think that I am still remembering something about what went on, even with this particular case. Uh, they already reached the consensus, they already came to agreements. Uh, <coughs> In fact, I think this guy was even meeting me at the German employment agency. Uh, that means that the German intelligence uh, would de they deliver me to some German employment agency, wherever this was, <coughs> Berlin or whatever, I don't know. It could be Frankfurt, whatever it was. They would deliver me to the German employment agencies also, where you would go and report yourself as a somebody who is searching for work and it would be this guy also that would come uh, to meet me you know uh, but then again this is identical issue to the Norwegian Norske Anders Breivik yeah and his mama in Miami where I used to live in Miami this guy would also meet it. State Employment Agency, one stop career center <coughs> in Miami downtown would also be under the brave that would meet me. That's a North extremist, Norwegian extremist, prior to his lunacy. Yeah. His mama got a magical assignment in Miami. Not his mama, I don't know, mother-in-law, whatever. He would also pay the visits to <coughs> one-stop career center where obviously with the Central Intelligence Agency, I don't know who the fuck, FBI, Federal Bureau Investigation, who is running this kind of stuff? Who is running this kind of issues? Who else is running this kind of issues? I would not know about any other person that does it in the United States of America. Playing with jogging up people through MKH with a case like this, I don't think anybody comes anywhere even close other than FBI and CIA. So, you know, these people have a whole lot to explain. There's been a lot of all kinds of stuff, some of which was also fake shootings and stuff. Uh, some were real, like the case of this lunatic here, who traveled to the Belarus, to the Lukashenko. This was a quite a big guy, this guy, this Andrzej Borivik, in this MKUltra. 
with Norwegian government. King Harald of Norway and his son Hakon wanted to terrorize me, traumatize me. Literally have delivered me into the psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polje from Norway, where I applied for the political asylum in 2010, thrown out on a snow, basically, by the Norwegian police for applying for political asylum in Norway and flown, drugged up, into the psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana Polje in Slovenia. Ah, <laughs> um, Time to get clear about it. Time to tell the world the truth about your skeleton in the closet that you kept for no less than 52 years. I'm just a little man you kept inside of the closet for 52 years. But I'm here and I will not stop. <laughs>